Recently, I kind of surprised myself. In prior videos, I stated that I had no particular interest in smart telescopes like the Dwarf Lab or C-Star units. But when ZWO announced the C-Star S30 for only 349 US dollars, I had to take a second look. Frankly, most of my astro cameras cost more than that. How could such a fully integrated astro imaging device, complete with a color camera, be offered at such an insane price? But it wasn't just the price. I have taken some really nice photos with my Askar FMA 135 astrograph lens, which has a similar aperture and focal ratio. And being a triplet designed APO system like the Askar unit, I believe the S30 has some respectable optics. Of course the tracking is inferior, using an alt-as stepwise approach, but still, $349? So how could I resist? Indeed, there are times when it is not possible to carry around many kilograms of equipment with me to do astrophotography. Even the compact Askar FMA-135 unit requires a lot of support equipment, like a mount, camera, battery, computer, etc. There are also moments when only a small window of clear skies are available for imaging. It just does not make any sense during times like that to set up a full-scale imaging rig. And recently, it was exactly just one of those times when I had about one hour of clear skies that I brought out the S30 to image the California Nebula, NGC 1499. This was my first target with the Seastar S30 unit. I grabbed the tripod, attached the sea star carried it into the backyard, pointed it up between the houses, and walked back inside. Elapsed time, five minutes of preparation. From inside, I initiated an autofocus, and then selected the California Nebula and let the automated systems do all the rest. After an hour or so of imaging during my dinner time, the clouds rolled in and I found the S30 collected and stacked 50 minutes of data. Apparently, algorithms had detected the encroaching consistent cloud cover and terminated the auto stacking, leaving me with the stacked image you see here. This is a screenshot from my Samsung smart tablet. To capture this image, I set parameters to take 20 second exposure times, so at least 150 FITS files were collected and stacked in real time by the C-Star. This FITS file and a JPEG version of it are also provided by the C-Star unit when you connect it to your computer through a USB-C port and download the data. If you convert one of these FITS files to JPEG and look at it, the image is recognizable including some red nebulosity visible in a single 20 second frame. The California Nebula is fairly bright at magnitude 6, so I guess this is not too surprising. So, this is the Seastar S30 stacked image without any post-processing. It is the original, unedited stacked image. However, you can take the JPEG file or the stacked FIT file and edit that to easily create a better image. I use Graxpert for light pollution gradient removal, GIMP for color processing, and then Topaz Denoise and iPhoto for final touch-ups. This is the same stacked image but post-processed with an experienced human touch. Notice the contrast and image quality are significantly improved. So if you are new to astrophotography and the C-Star is your first imaging rig, you should really learn a little bit about astro image post-processing to get the most out of your C-Star experience. There are lots of excellent free softwares available to help you. But you know, you can improve this image even more if you get direct access to the raw FITS files. Let me show you how to do this. On the opening menu, press the C-Star Equipment Image. This will get you to a new menu and information screen, the one you see here on the right. At the bottom is a setting button for the voice volume that I have set to low. But this is not the bottom of the menu screen. Swipe it up in order to scroll down to the bottom. This shows you the screen when you have reached the bottom and down there you will see advanced features. 
If you click on this, you can see where exposure time can be adjusted and a selection button is available to save each frame. If the Save Each Frame feature is engaged, when you later connect the C-Star to your computer to download the data, you will find a file that contains all the raw fits images for that imaging session. This allows you to then inspect and find any subframes that might have artifacts or satellites or star trails for discarding. I think the C-Star algorithms do a good job of eliminating bad subframes, but a keen human eye can do a better job. For instance, in this case, I discarded 4 minutes of data, or 12 frames that seemed to be questionable, before I stacked the remainder using Cyril on my iMac desktop computer. I then used the same software described previously, this time including StarNet++ for star removal, and I fully processed the C-Star image myself. And here is that result. Notice I reduced the star intensity, but you can adjust the star field to your liking with the tools above. It is quite an improvement over the original image, don't you think? Here are the three images side by side. The original unedited C-Star stacked image is on the left, the middle one is using that same stacked image, but is improved with external editing tools. And the one on the right accesses the original C-Star FITS files for stacking and processing, all with external software tools. In my opinion, I think the image on the right shows more detail and texture, and more of a visual emphasis on the nebula region as well. For less than one hour worth of data, using a $349 imaging rig, the quality of the images that apparently can be achieved on deep sky nebula objects is rather amazing. It was fun, easy, and frankly, I'm impressed. Of course, the quality of the images produced by the Seastar S30 cannot really compete with better imaging rigs like the one shown here on the right, which costs 10 to 20 times as much money. The classic style piecemeal component imaging rig is much more flexible. It enables the use of other cameras, EQ mode tracking, guiding, long exposures, any filter, and even visual astronomy. It of course will also provide higher resolution images due to its larger aperture and even better signal to noise. But this is not a contest. The C-Star is an excellent beginner system, is fun and educational, and I believe worth every penny. It's a great stepping stone to astrophotography. And even for experienced deep sky imagers, the C-Star S30 is fun for alternative use scenarios. I predict you will see more about it on some of my future episodes. So, Thanks for joining me here again at Astrophotography Japan. I hope you have clear skies and time to enjoy it.